Langley. Thank you, Speaker. You know, there's, there's no doubt that the, the top call we continue to get in my riding in Argoist Glenbrook has to do with autism. And there's stories about parents who are just trying to get a chance for their kids to have a higher quality of life. And God bless those that are here today. And these stories are in incredibly moving. There was a, um, during Autism Awareness Week, there was a girl in, in Alabama who did a speech to her classmates. I think she was nine years old or so, and she talked about what autism actually meant to her to explain to the other kids. And she said a person with autism has a brain that just works differently from other people. It's, it's not worse. It's just wired differently. And she may, may react differently than other people, but her quality of life is just as important, Speaker. And that's why it's so heartbreaking for so many of us, and I know members on this side too, have their own stories in the writings, and hopefully you hear some from the other benches. Look, my, my daughter Miller uh, is not autistic. She has, a, has had a severe speech impediment. So when families tell me that they hope one day they'll hear their son or daughter say, I love you, I get that. I've been there, Speaker. And we had early intervention, no doubt, but I know that the actual best progress happened after she turned five. She had greater maturity, stamina, and now I can have conversations with her, and it's wonderful. But I remember years ago thinking that might never happen. So I know what these families are going through, and I know in my heart that if a child can continue to have IBI treatment after five, they're going to excel, not go backwards. I, I have no doubt that it's going to move them forward. They're going to actually respond better, Speaker. I know apraxia is different from autism, but I think that her brain's wired a bit differently, not better, not worse, just different. But I've seen it in her own lives, and I want to see it happen for constituents of mine to get that same break. So next Father's Day comes around, they'll hear their son or daughter say, I love you, happy Father's Day. I get it. You know, Kelly and Chris seem to compel them in that boat. Their son Aaron was diagnosed with autism at the age of two. And sadly, because Niagara has among the highest wait lists in the province, they've been waiting for four years. And I met with them, and they wanted me to raise this issue, which I did in correspondence to the government, saying, do something about Niagara's wait lists. I know my colleague, Mr. Bradley, and colleagues, Mr. Gates and Ms. Forster, have similar concerns. And then Kelly said she never imagined the solution to the long wait list was to kick a whole bunch of kids off, including probably her son. They don't think Aaron will get service before he turns five years old. And they want to know why and ask me to be their voice here in the chamber, why the government's policy has made an arbitrary value judgment to say that his hope is going to be gone. Seven-year-old Wesley of Grimsby is similar speaker. He had full-time IBI for the past 13 months. And his parents tell me that the change in his quality of, of life has been phenomenal. His parents say they've gone from a son who tempered frequently and used diapers to a little boy who can talk. He's toileted and he can enjoy activities. But there's one really important milestone left to go, and that's chewing food and eating more than just three simple flavors of baby food at his age. And the therapists are confident that with IBI therapy, they're going to reach that milestone. But he's kicked off and has a very restricted diet the rest of his life speaker. It's going to cause health problems, and I share his parents' fear he's going to go backwards. Beth Van Stadeluden of Jordan Station waited nearly four and a half years for IBI service for her son, who just started IBI finally before his sixth birthday. And Beth says, God bless her heart, the changes to autism is bittersweet because she's happy that other children are going to get services but that it'd have to come at the expense of her son, who is getting forward. And it breaks her heart because while well, he has a few months left, I guess, on treatment, every therapy session she has, she knows the clock is ticking, and that's gonna be it. And little Dayton of Lincoln, who less than a year ago is banging his head on the wall, drinking from a baby bottle, is still in diapers. His mom, Jessica, works with him as much as possible. She's doing her best to try to mimic IBI therapy. She made some progress. He's got a bit of vocabulary now. He's toilet trained. But imagine if he had ongoing treatment from a full IBI therapist speaker, the kind of miracles that could happen. We would never dream of cutting off access to the ER because you've waited for five hours or eight hours, you go home. These are human beings. 
It should be the judgment of a healthcare professional when you're making progress, not based on the number of candles on your birthday cake. I hope the members opposite will help out these kids in my riding and the road.